Hello friends, it's Christy Marcotte. I've been having so much fun using Queen & Company's brand new shaped card kits. In today's video, I'm going to make some cards using the donut kit. For my first card, I'm going to be using the pink polka dot paper from Queen & Company's Petite Patterns Paper Collection. There are four card bases included in the kit and they do have a little score line, so you just need to fold those in half. So I've gone ahead and used the dies and cut out this background piece using the pink polka dot paper. And then I cut the rest of the donut pieces out of some brown cardstock. Then you just take the circle die that's included in the kit to cut out the whole of the donut. I'm just putting a bunch of ATG tape on the back side of this pink piece and then I can adhere it directly to the card base. And then the kit also includes four of the foam and four of the acetate pieces. So these are very simple cards to assemble since everything is pre-cut. I'm attaching the small foam circle first, so that's the whole of the donut. And the foam is double-sided with adhesive, so you just need to remove the backing. Now on this second piece, you want to make sure that that die cut lines up perfectly with the design on the foam. So it has this little wavy design since that'll be the frosting on the donut. And even though they're very similar, if you turn them around, there is only one correct direction. And I find it's easier to figure out which direction that piece will go before you start attaching it with the glue on the back. So now it's time to fill the shaker and these are very large shakers so you can definitely add a ton of shaker toppings or you can keep it light. It just depends on what you prefer for your shaker cards. For this card, I'm using the refill topping pack from Queen & Company's Sweet Shop kit. It has a bunch of different sprinkles in some pretty colors and I selected the two pinks, some of the browns and then also some of the white. I also included some of the ombre pearlies. The bottle has red on the top, but they really have more of a pink and brown color, and I thought that matched perfectly. So once I have the toppings in place, I just remove the backing on the foam, and then I could attach the acetate. And now I'm just using some liquid adhesive and putting it all around the outside where that foam is, and then I can put my frame on top. And since I had already figured out the direction for the die, I could just lay it directly on top and then press it firmly in place. I've already gone ahead and stamped out the sentiment, don't worry, you've got this. I used one of Queen & Company's tag dies. I believe this one is from their Love Jar kit. And I'm gonna add some trio trims in this really pretty pink that has an iridescent threading throughout it. So I tied a bow, trimmed off the extra tail, and then I'm going to use a small glue dot and attach it on the tag, right where the little hole is. And then I'll use a larger glue dot to attach the tag onto the card. So I'm just putting a couple of them on the back side. And I always find it easier to take the paper and press it against the glue dot rather than try to peel off that glue dot. So one finishing touch, I'm gonna add a couple of these small pink hearts. The heart die is from Queen & Company's Love Jar Flower and Stem die set. I think there's three or four different sizes of hearts. So I attach the first heart using just some liquid adhesive and then I'm gonna pop up that second heart with a thin foam square. And then one final finishing touch, I'm gonna add just a few of the pink jelly gems. I love the colors on this donut card. Pink and brown together have always been one of my favorite color combinations. So there is the finished card. And there are envelopes included in the kit that will fit these oversized cards. Now moving on to card number two. The paper collection I'll be using is Queen & Company's Fruit Basket. And I chose the lemon background paper. Lemon filled donuts were always one of my favorites. And I almost put the adhesive on the back before cutting out the hole, but I'm glad I caught myself. Once I've cut the hole out of the center of the donut, I can attach this pattern paper to the card base. And I did flip over the card base. I find it easier to line everything up nice and straight. 
I chose some cardstock from my stash that I thought looked more like a donut color. Since my first card was chocolate, I figured I'd have a traditional donut for my second card. So I'm just attaching the foam pieces. Again, making sure to line up that frame. And now I'm going to fill my shaker. I pulled out four different shaker toppings all in yellow, although I end up only using three of them. So I have some diamonds, some pearlies, and then also some lemons that were left over from the fruit basket kit. And I do keep getting a few of them in the center of the donut hole, but luckily I pull those out before I seal it all in place with the acetate. So now I can go ahead and glue on the frames. So let's put that liquid adhesive around the outside. And I had a little bit of glue on my fingers, so this little center hole kept peeling off. And I'll do the same thing for this outside frame. And I'm using Queenie Company's sheer glue. It attaches the paper to the acetate really nicely. So now I'm gonna start working on the sentiment. I've gone ahead and stamped out you just don't know how much you mean to me. Aren't these fun? I love Queen & Company's sentiments. I cut both of these pieces out using one of their foundation dies. So I just have some yellow cardstock for that background piece and then white cardstock for the sentiment. And then I'm gluing them directly onto the card, just sort of offset them slightly for a little more interest. Now I'm using some more of their trio trims. This is in the yellow color and I'm doing a double bow. So I just tie that and I'll snip off the ends. Then I'm trying to get the two tail ends going the same direction. And then I'll just attach that with a small glue dot. So I'm just putting that on the left hand side of the sentiment. Still fussing with the tails a little bit. Couldn't decide which direction I wanted them to go. And then just one final finishing touch, I'm adding one of Queen & Company's glitter flowers. These are a hard plastic and they have a light coating of glitter on them. They're really pretty. I'll be adhering it directly on top of the bow and since it goes over the dimension of that twine, I put a thin foam square on both sides of the twine and then use some glue dots to attach the flower. So there is my finished card. I love how this one turned out as well. Not sure which one's my favorite yet. Now moving on to my next set of cards. I'm using the Sweet Shop paper collection and also the Happy Holidays paper collection. So that's where this brown piece is from. I also used some brown cardstock and cut out this circle just to add a little extra stability. As much as I love making the shaker cards, it's easy to use the dies from Queen & Company's kit to make non-shaker cards as well. And in case you didn't notice, after I put the glue on the back of this pink piece, I completely dropped it on top of these other two papers. So you're gonna see me trying to wipe this off quite a bit, which I do end up getting it all off later and I'll show you how I did that. Now for this card, I'm not using the card bases that are included in the kit. I'm going to attach this onto an A2 size card. Since this is a donut, I'm just gonna have the hole and you can see the polka dot paper through the donut, which it looks fine, but I decided to add some scrap white cardstock to the back instead. I felt the polka dot paper was just a little too busy. So I'm just gonna attach that onto my card panel and I will have the two ends of the donut hanging off of the sides. So I'm gonna put my card front onto a card base. Now with the donut going off of the ends, this card will not fit in a standard A2 size envelope. If you would prefer it that way, you can just trim off those ends of the donut. With such a large image on the card, there's not a whole lot you can add for decoration, but I am gonna put this scalloped border piece on the very top of the card, and I just used some more of the pattern paper from the Sweet Shop kit for that, and one of Queenie Company's border dies. Now here is where I'm removing the rest of that adhesive. I did some of it off screen, but I did wanna show what I was using, and it's just an adhesive remover eraser. 
It doesn't work with all liquid adhesives, but with cleaning companies, it was super simple to just wipe away that glue. And now you'd never know I had sticky glue all over the front of my card. So now I'm working on the sentiment and I've stamped out thanks a whole lot. Just using one of Queen & Company's foundation die sets, these little banners. I cut out one with this pink polka dot paper and then I used the Sweet Shop matte stack for the second one. I trimmed off the left hand side so they would both be flush to the edge. I did also add a small piece of scrap cardstock underneath the pink paper just to keep everything nice and even on the card. So now I'm using some of the pink twine. Just hide a small bow and I'll be attaching it on the left side of the sentiment using a small glue dot. I pulled out a few more of the glitter flowers and also this heart button. This is one of Queenie Company's brand new button sets. They have four different varieties and they're so fun. And I'm just going to attach that right on top of the bow using some glue dots. Then I'll use a larger glue dot for these glitter flowers and put those in the upper right hand corner on the donut. And I felt like my donut needed some sprinkles. So I'm going to use some of Queenie Company's polka dot epoxy dots. I'm using the pink, the yellow, and the green to stick in with the same colors on the pattern paper. And I'm alternating the sizes. So I have the large and then also the small. I'm trying to place them fairly random, but I guess they're kind of even as well. I just do one color at a time and then just see where there's a small gap so I can fill it in with one of the epoxy dots. So there is my finished card. And I did make a second card very similar, although on this card, I didn't cut out the hole for the donut. Without that hole cut out in the center, I think this looks like a cookie. It would normally be those sugar cookies with that thick frosting on top, but I decided to make mine a chocolate cookie, add the pink frosting, and now I'm using some Nuvo crystal drops in the gloss white color to add the icing on the top. And I did speed this part up quite a bit, and you're just seeing me wipe off the tip whenever I felt there was too much on the end, because I'm trying to get a very smooth line of the icing. And there is my finished cookie card. You'll have to let me know, does it look like a cookie? I kind of felt like that icing should have been a little thicker, but I didn't want to make a huge mess using the Nuvo drops since they can be unpredictable at times. Now here's just a quick recap of the four cards I made using Queenie Company's Donut Shaped Card Kit. This kit was so fun to use. I love how you can use the dies for shaker cards as well as non-shaker cards. I have provided links in the description box for this kit along with the other new shaped card kits by Queen & Company. There are so many fun kits. It's hard to decide which one to use next. Be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any future videos. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.